Well, much of the guitar work on this album has been um, recorded as your recent solo efforts um, without the use of amps and cabinets, not real yeah. ones, simulated amps and cabinets in the box, which give us a great deal more um, flexibility in terms of the sound, adjusting the sound after the fact too during the course of the mix, but nonetheless there's a floor covered with pedals. Yes. Some of which are? The pedals are, most importantly, I would say, um, the Sans Amp, uh, which gives me a distortion, um, the Digitech Whammy pedal, I'm very fond of that. Um, also a Pete Cornish uh, specially built thing called an Iron Boost, which, when you hook those things up together, um, it pretty much has the sound of a couple of Marshalls hooked up in, in series, wired up in series. And um, by the time uh, Roger has... has place this array of, of amp plugins in front of me um, it really does sound amazingly like um, an amp spitting fire you know potentially they're ready to deafen anyone who goes anywhere near it with, with a mic so it's an amazing sound so those old favorite pedals been and gone really from the 70s they have yeah I used to use uh, a Marshall super fuzz um, sometimes a color a, a color sound super fuzz um, a tone bender, um, uh, Shaftesbury Geo Fuzz, that was all part of the kit I used with Genesis in the old days, but um, if I want that kind of sound of those hooked up in series as I used to use them, um, I tend to use a, a fixed wah-wah pedal, so that'll be a, a, a Vox or it'll be a, be a Crybaby these days, just to give it that extra upper harmonic, that thin kind of sound, nasal sort of sound like we've used on, for instance, a uh, flow on a windshield. Okay, uh, multimeter software Makes a big old showing on this album. There's yep. a particular start, uh, which is the Ampeg SVX plugin, which has enabled us to to work with bass players, recording with it in their own home environment, sending their audio files and their plugin settings. It's been fabulous to be able to again adjust in the mix there, but have the sound more or less as intended up front. It's been a big star and sounds terrific. Um, but we used bits and pieces of IK stuff all over the place. The, the Fairchild 670 plug-in has been lovely on acoustic guitars and voices to provide that sort of um, upfront, stick it in your face sound. Um, that is a good sound. It is a very nice sound. It worked very well on the um, Somatis. Yeah. I would say. Um, Somatis 12 string that is for the uninitiated. Well, it's a beautiful sounding guitar to start with and records yeah. very well, but in order to pull it up to the front of the mix, you need you know, proper old-fashioned compressors, of which 670 is perhaps the best known, and, and this yeah. is a, a really nice implementation. Uh, in addition to those regular plug-ins, of course, we've used quite a lot of um, IK instruments, plug-in instruments, um, sample tank, sample Moog, a bit of sample Tron, um, Philharmonic. The cast we've got on the album is massive amount of people, probably about 35 people in total if you count everybody in the, and their various contributions um, a number of, of great singers uh, we've got Simon Collins for instance, uh, Phil's son who I'm sure is going to blaze a trail all of his own so that no one will need to say Phil's son in future with that um, Michael Ackerfeld, uh, Nad Sylvan, John Wetton, Stephen Wilson, Neil Morse to mention but a few, and there are masses more. Francis Dunnery, did you mention Francis? Francis Dunnery, um, uh, of, formerly of It Bites, a fabulous guitarist, but we have him uh, on this in, in purely in, in vocal uh, mode. Jack O'Jaxic as well, he's um, well known to King Crimson fan. Indeed. Yep. Um, plus a supporting cast of um, names who'd be more familiar from recent Hackett albums. That's true. Hackett tours to Lee Pomeroy. Yes. Phil Mulford, Nick Beggs on bass. Amanda Lehman. Indeed, Gary O'Toole, Jeremy Stacey drumming. Yep. Me. You. Me on keyboards, although Dave Kurtzner contributed some terrific work too, and Nick Magnus has put in an appearance on, he has on Camino. That's right. Camino and, Royale, I should and say. The, and, the, and the intro to a Musical Box, which is entirely different from the original recording, so, yep. And many more. All these guys are, uh, as you say, all around the world. Um, Simon and Francis in the States and two, contribu two, two contributors in Sweden and 
other people dotted around the UK in the main they recorded themselves Nick Kershaw also yeah recorded themselves musicians are so tech savvy these days and usually have their own recording setups so quite a lot of it has been sent in you know, internet and all that sending audio files and it's been an exercise in building in files from other people um, Dave had been very helpful on this, Dave Kirchner, Dave Kirchner yes, um, indeed, who, great working with him. He recorded Simon um, and got us together with Francis Dunnery as well. Yep. A regular band, um, which is uh, Roger King, uh, Rob Townsend, uh, Ned Sylvan in this case, uh, Gary O'Toole, um, Lee Pomeroy on bass, and uh, these the, the, the tickets are already selling like wildfire for this. Uh, we are going out with a production, it's not going to be just a straight performance, so... It will be spectacular with screens and, and lights. And I'm looking forward to it uh, tremendously. And you neglected to mention a guitarist, of course. Any thoughts? Oh, I don't know. We'll get some guy called Steve Howe or Steve Hackett. Well, you know, well, Howe's better, I think. Let's have him. Oh, yeah. Bert Whedon.